Yeah, this is a mess. Right now I'm rewiring the speedometer so that it works properly. A nice aftermarket speedometer, you can get it on the bike. But this is the pain in the butt part that I didn't feel like showing in great detail. The connector that comes on this speedometer does not match up with the stock one. And I want all this to be one piece. I want to plug it into the harness, not have to modify the harness that's still on the bike, and just boom, be done. So, I'm going to finish this up. We'll get out to the bike. <laughs> What's up guys, I'm Renegade, and if you're not already subscribed, then you might not know this, but for those of you who are, this is my 1986 Suzuki Intruder 700. It's a little torn apart right now. Reason for that is, if you saw other videos, you know that the speedometer didn't work. So, I'm replacing the speedometer. The turn signals are gone. So, I'm going to replace the turn signals. Replacing all that on the front end. But it meant a bunch of wiring, so I had to take off the gas tank and the seat to get off to the wires, to take the wires off, to rewire everything. Royal pain in the butt. I'm not gonna bother boring you with all that stuff. So we're just gonna get into the fun stuff. So today's project, which might be today and tomorrow, considering the weather, not sure, uh, is going to be a new headlight and a new speedometer. Headlight wise, going with this. This is a replacement standard bucket or the normal filament bulb. We're going to replace that down the road. That's not important right now. But what is important is right here, see on either side, are LEDs. They make up turn signals, so they're integrated into the headlight. Should be really nice. Now it came with these brackets that I've already put on. Just slip the one side in with this little tab and then it all bolts together. Right now they're just loose because nothing's set yet. And they're the ears that are gonna hold the bucket. Now with this loosely put in like this, I can go about setting up the wiring to actually get the rest of it done. So you see this big harness that's hanging out right now. It's not its normal spot, but it's on just because I need it for the different tests I'm doing, so I haven't haven't fully dressed it, I haven't put it back into its place just in case anything is wrong, because I don't want to do it twice. Now this headlight bucket has two screws which hold the actual headlight unit into the bucket. Now this model Suzuki has what they call a cooling solution unit. I don't know. But it's this guy here, and this was on the back of the stock speedometer. Because I'm taking off everything, I had to go ahead and bolt it into the back of the bucket where there was more space. You might notice also that you're moving around, and my hands are free to do other things. That's because once again, I have the beautiful and lovely Stephanie holding the camera for me. Because she's crazy and is willing to freeze her ass off in this weather to help me. Hi. <laughs> Snap these all together because they're going to need to go together and I don't feel like I'm doing the bucket more than I have to. It's a pain. Basically just relocating the cooling solution unit thing. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what it does. All I know is that it's an integral part of the temperature gauge system, which will tell you whether or not you're overheating. Now, this bike also had turn signals that worked as marker lights. They were on all the time. So I did do a little bit of wiring change while I had all this out, so that they're not gonna do that anymore because I don't need them to do that. But the main thing is I got my grounds for my turn signals, my signal wires for my turn signals, and my headlight plug. Headlight plug obviously just goes on my headlight. These have the same option. But I know from experience that as long as you hook up only two of the wires, they only run part of the time. 
as long as you have all your wires to your turn signals pulled up into your uh, into your headlight bucket, or you run these wires out to your turn signal wires after removing your stock turn signals, you can use a headlight setup like this very easily. Get these jammed on in here. So with these plugged in, if I turn on the headlight, light! Wow. Fancy. One thing I did add in here are these LEDs. I got them labeled right now for what they are. There's a reason for it. This is the aftermarket speedometer that I'm going to put on this bike. And it's got some warning lights inside. The only problem is it doesn't have enough what this bike has. So, simple job of soldering on some new wires and running them. And I drilled two holes in the back of this bucket. So now I can put these lights in here. We'll label them later so that I know what they are. Come on now, snap in. I'll label these later. But these are going to work as indicator lights or warning lights for the temperature and the oil. Now we tuck all this mess of wires back in. Oh crap. What's your name? I need the screwdriver. The blue one? Yeah, look at that. Thank you. <laughs> Put our screws back in, hold the bucket all back together. Now I'm sure some of you right now are looking at this and wondering, what's with the white fin? This is actually an aftermarket, uh, what do they call it? An aftermarket shroud or visor that you can get for your headlight unit. And it just snaps in to the curve of your headlight bucket. This is not going to stay white. This is a protective cover. It will be chrome. But I'm leaving the protective cover on while I do all this work because I don't want to scratch it and make it look like poo poo before I actually am done with it. Like it's not, but it's not going to stay white, I promise you. It's like all this stuff is going to stay loose for right now because I'm still fitting everything. Next step is to install the uh, speedometer gate. Alright. So as I said, I bought this speedometer. Now the speedometer comes with the gauge itself and the wiring harness, which I had to rewire into all this fun that is for the stock intruder. That's, I hate wiring, it's boring as hell. That's why I didn't make a video of it, because you guys, it's not interesting. Nobody wants to watch that. If you want to see the wiring of how I did it uh, to make this gauge work, leave it down in the comment section and we'll talk about it in the next video. But, this does not come with any bracket. So, what I did was take a piece of stock metal, traced out what I needed for it to fit, and just cut it and gave us a little slight bend. Pretty simple, and it'll work. That's the main thing. For this, I'm literally going to attach it right where the stock speedometer was. There's actually two bolt holes up under here. I don't know if you'll be able to see those or not, because it's really hard to see. Even I'm having a hard time seeing them but they're right there. I probably should not have put the bucket in, in the way. And this is why it pays to think in advance and plan, because now i got to take the headlight bucket back off so I can get to the bolt holes. It's alright, you guys watching, can learn a thing or two about this. Think ahead! And of course, make sure you drop all your nuts and washers.
Come on now, there we go. It's really cold. So you have to pardon me if my hands don't work quite properly. Now if you're doing this on a stock bike, taking off your speedometer cluster for the first time, you'll find that they use Phillips head bolts due to the angle of everything. When you take them off, get rid of them. <laughs> use hex heads. So you can use a ratchet with a knuckle on it and gain better access to them. Like I'm doing now. Yeah, the speedometer just goes on with two easy bolts. Two ten. Yay! Now, have you noticed we've got rubber bushings in here? It's going to give it a slight dampening effect, and also it's not going to. Uh, what's it called? And it's going to give a slight bit of tension to this, so these bolts don't come loose. And just snap our big ass connector into it. This little pigtail is actually for the speedometer sensor. This uses an electric magnet speedometer pickup. I have to put that somewhere down there near the brake rotor, but I'll do that in a little bit. But you now all this is for testing purposes now. I got other projects to do before I can actually ride the motorcycle. Or ride it again, I guess. Put our seat back on for testing purposes. So, from my view of the bike, got the speedometer, and just over it are the two LED warning lights. So now if I turn on the bike, Ta-da! Hey. Nice, nice and lit up. But obviously I can't show you everything because the bike's not running right now. So, that's gonna have to be later on. But it's nice to see that it actually does work. Notice right now, the neutral light does indeed work. I can get it back into neutral. There we go. And it does have turn signal warning lights and a couple other things that I gotta wire up and get set up. But I think we're gonna do that later because frankly it is cold and I don't necessarily want to continue doing this with the cold. But wow. I'd say it doesn't look half bad. What do you think, huh? Let me at least get the tank back on for the visual, huh? Not too shabby. Like I said, it's cold though, so we're gonna end it here and pick up tomorrow. Well, it's been a while. So, when Steph and I uh, recorded that bit that you just watched, that was a good, uh, almost two months ago. The weather has been absolutely crud. It's been rainy, or it's been cold, or it's been windy as all hell, and I haven't been able to work on the bike. I've got a couple little moments, but not enough to actually really do much, which kind of sucks. So, big long pause between then and now. Crazy, a video that lasts like two, three months. Oi. But, had a little uh, riding on the bike. Also ran into a problem. The speedometer bit the dust. Something on the grounds just went kapooey. So it doesn't actually work anymore. If I turn on, that's all that happens. Now granted, the neutral light does work. But that's it. Nothing else works. 
kind of a shame. But I've got a new one coming on the way. It'll be here soon. I'll wire that up. Also, I wanted to show you, I did install an LED. So now it's really bright and really white. I did also get the turn signals hooked up correctly. Look really nice. And for ride purposes, did hook up a couple turn signals in the back. I'm not happy with them, but it is what it is. Also, I don't recall if I mentioned, but I did put on some mufflers. These are actually from a Harley, I believe a Sportster, but I could be wrong. Uh, a couple simple brackets to hold it in place. They're now rock steady. And frankly, they sound pretty badass. Why don't I start the bike up and uh, I'll give you guys a little taste, huh? Shadows pretty quietly, but then when you rev her up, she really screams. It's a really nice sound. But the good news is that with this much done, I want to rewire the speedometer when it gets here. No problem, easy enough. But it means we can move forward. I think the next step is dealing with this tail unit. This whole tail is going to get changed. I don't think you guys are really going to like it. But I don't think we have a whole, whole lot left. Uh, tail. A couple little accent pieces. And then paint. And I might have a little surprise for you guys. But we'll see in the next video, huh? But if you're not subscribed already, please do subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you can notify when I upload a new video. And, uh, yeah. Lucky rock and roll. I'll keep taking care of business. I'll see you in the next one.